All right, I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Sean Tierney here with uh, Heather Maloney. Uh, we work together all the time doing hydrodissections, and we have uh, you know somebody we've uh, worked with here that, uh, who's had some issues, uh, which is a really we're, we're here because we're talking about these issues that are very common for people that have cancer or other things that cause adhesions, surgery, and uh, other and other reasons that cause ad adhesions in the neck and how that kind of presents and, and how hydrodissection has been able to change things for a lot of these folks. So, uh, what, what, was, what would you say about your experience? Well, I had um, head and neck cancer, and uh, I had proton stream therapy and modified chemotherapy with cisplatin. Um, it left a, a tremendous amount of pain in which they told me it would, in the throat, in the face, in the jaw particularly. Um, dif difficulty swallowing. Um, it was just really difficult pain, and, and I don't do well with pain medication, so um, I just toughed it out, and, uh, and then I came and saw you again, and I had such success with my neck and lumbar treatment that you gave me that um, you know we tried we tried this also my voice um, was lower by <laughs> three four octaves you know and uh, and uh, I think right away at the first treatment my voice changed on the tape um, which is important because I, I do voice over so I got my job back which was nice and that has, after the first treatment, that has sustained. I think you, you treated it a few more times, um, but it's held. Uh, the subsequent treatments reduced the, the jaw pain and eliminated the, the clinching that I was doing, um, even unconsciously, just clinching my teeth all the time. And uh, the, the neck pain um, from what the cumulative treatment is reduced greatly, it's almost gone. Um, the throat pain and swallowing is is almost gone, so eating is no longer an issue at all. And uh, I have, I'm, I'm completely off all the, the gabapentin, which was the only one that I could tolerate in terms of pain medication. And uh, the other stuff I just didn't take for more than a day or two. So this has been a huge uh, boon for me in terms of getting getting my health back. Um, and taking me out of pain, like, almost immediately. So I would say that it's uh, a very modest intervention in terms of pain or discomfort. Um, and it's been very successful for me. So I imagine post-surgically for a lot of folks, uh, this is a viable alternative. Yeah. And how, how far out are you from your surgery and your proton? Oh gosh. Diagnosed in, in June and surgery in July. And uh, let's see, I'm, I'm about three months out post-treatment radiation. So I came in pretty soon after. I think it was a few weeks. Mm -hmm. It was more the COVID mm -hmm. thing than anything else. I, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I mean, the oncologist was not skeptical. He was just saying, you know, look, that area is really irritated. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with it. But, you know, you don't know, you can't get what you don't have. Right. <laughs> so if you don't have experience with this, how are you going to give advice to, to experiment? And he's just very protective and just didn't know about it. And uh, after talking to him about it, you know, because I called him and I said, hey, look, this is something that I experienced. And, uh, if it's a placebo, I highly recommend that other people take it. You know, so, anyway, that was yeah. Yeah. And I mean, just to, for the, you know, the practitioners and the, and the, the maybe you watching this is, so what we did was, you know, when you have uh, radiation therapy and surgery, the chances of getting adhesions in the, in the very complex uh, cervi anterior cervical musculature 
uh, you know, the, the chance of that happening is high, and it's a lot of people suffer with pretty severe pain. Um, and there is a solution, so we're just simply using uh, uh, a more benign fluid of uh, uh, dextrose solution or saline to separate the connective tissue around the nerves, you know, and, and in this case we had dissected, not all at the same, on the same day, had dissected the uh, hypoglossopharyngeal uh, vagus uh, and uh, uh, C1 nerve roots and anterior C1 between digastric and the rectus capitis ant anticus. And then we uh, also had a dissected uh, some mandibular plexus, trigeminal facial, hypoglossopharyngeal nerves. Uh, then we all went on to uh, how to dissect uh, the C2 nerve root and the greater auricular nerve. Um, and uh, I think that was the majority of what made. Uh, we also had uh, dissected the mandibular branch of the uh, trigeminal nerve in, uh, in the face. So those fairly effective, not complex, uh, fairly low risk as long as the, the, the practitioners are skilled in performing those procedures, uh, we're able to handle a lot of uh, a lot of this chronic debilitating pain and and I, and I think we can eliminate a lot of opiate use as well. Um, so hopefully that this spreads to more of the on, oncologist on, you know community and uh, the, ca the cancer surviving community and the uh, neck surgery surviving community. Uh, but so, that's what we have. I really appreciate you letting us know. You know, there was one experience. other thing that I forgot to mention. Yeah. That when I first saw you, I had tremendous ear pain. Mm. It felt like an ear, an ear infection. Right. And my throat was more like an acute strep right. sensation. And that, that has, um, each injection mitigated that tremendously. This is now gone, ear pain is gone. The weird pressure thing is totally resolved. So it's, uh, I wanted to mention that. I appreciate that, thank you. Anything you wanna add, Heather? No, it's just been, it's been a great experience to see you feeling better every time I see you. Yeah. yeah. Not have to be on pain meds and yeah. getting back to your healthy self. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Our honor, great honor. Okay. Great points. Okay.